And we look in that holy place and that holiest, that ark of the covenant, the cherubims. What's in that ark? Aaron's rod that budded. The pot of manna that they gathered. That was the testament. All of these testifying of the Lord Jesus Christ. But maybe as we look at it, we look and we see the Old Testament and we see the outer court. We see the outer court. And if you go back and you read, when they made the sacrifices and things, the women could not come and watch that. The way that they had to see was they built a big wall or some type of looking glass. I think maybe it was beaten out of, uh, of brass maybe. But they built a reflection as a mirror to where the congregation and the women could stand here and they could watch what was taking place, but it was on the reflection. They couldn't stand and, and, and see it directly. They had to see the reflection. Ain't that beautiful? <laughs> See, that's the way it is. But that's the way it was in the Old Testament because that's what that represented. That represented the types and the shadows. He said, Moses, build the tabernacle according to the pattern that I showed you in heaven. So when he brought it down here to earth, what did Moses have? It was the shadow. It was the reflection. He couldn't bring the spiritual down here. You couldn't see it. But he had to have a, 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 we was put under tutors and governors till the time appointed. So God placed it here and he put these things in order so we could understand what was taking place in the heavenlies. So they had this looking glass. They had this place. Then Paul saying, now we, we, we look through a glass darkly. But then we'll see face to face. There was the types and the shadows. There was the Old Testament. There was the outer court. But then we move into the holy place. Here come the New Testament. Here come the Lord Jesus. He opened the door and we went another step further. There, what was it? There was that there's candlesticks. There was the table. There was the showbread. Jesus said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. Here was the candlestick. Here we come, and now we got the church ages. And we see it lit. And what are they lit by? And it says, to the angel of this one, and to the angel of that one. How does it continue to burn? By Jesus Christ. We go back and we think of the, the story. And some of you is more familiar with this than I am. Is it Hanukkah? Where the lamps, they lit the lamps. They had a battle. They had war. And, and then the priest came and he wanted to restore the sacrifice. And they, they each day they would light one of the lamps. But they only had enough oil for one day. Is it Hanukkah? Is that what it was? They only had the oil enough for one day. But the priest went ahead and stepped out by faith because to do this and, and to begin to sacrifice and to keep, I believe it was the Passover and these things, he need, they needed to light this, light the menorah. And as he lit that, there was only enough oil for one day. But they went ahead and they lit it, and it burned the first day. And it burned the second day, and the third day, and the fourth day, and the fifth day, and the sixth, all the way through the seven days that they needed. Ain't that so beautiful? What did he say? Jesus Christ, he said, he is the one. 
All they needed was enough for one. And he took care of the rest. <laughs> but we see, as we look into the holy place, we get into that inner part, and we see a moving through, and we see the, the, the bread, and we see the table, and then we see the candlesticks, and we see the church ages. Then where does that put us now? If we've come through the outer court, and then we've moved through the inner court, then there's not but one place left. That's the holies of holies. The holies of holies. Paul says in chapter 10, No, maybe we just need to read start the first here. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, not the very image of the thing, can never, with those sacrifices which are offered year by year, continually make the comer thereunto perfect. Why? Because that was the shadow. The things that Moses set up was according to the pattern, the pattern that he saw in heaven, which would be the shadow. Once he brought it here, it was the shadow. That's why Brother George said so many times, I can go into heaven and look into the mind of Christ, but when I bring it back down, it's shadowed. And you end up getting it as an intellectual concept unless the Spirit of God reveals it to you and quickens it. No matter how much the men of God preached, how much revelation they had, no matter how much depth and how much they spent in the presence of God, it's still falling on the ears of the hearer. It goes through that intellectual reasoning, and that's where we have to pray that God allows us. As Brother George's vision was, he said he got the, up there to heaven, and he looked, and he had this beautiful art, and he wanted to take it out. And as he grabbed a piece of art and started out, something said, the law will get you for that. You can't do that. They have to come up here to where it's at. Which again, is confirmed by the scriptures that, you know, we can go into the holies of holies. Martin Luther preached, the just shall live by faith. He got a revelation. It wasn't just given to those to keep their ecclesiastical powers and hands on the word of God and just give you what they wanted you to hear. It was to where you could have the Holy Ghost, that Holy Ghost that was dwelling on the inside. He said, he's going to teach you, it's going to lead you, it's going to guide you. I said, well, what's the preacher? Well, I thought it's... It, you know, we're not taught by man. You're not. But it did say, how can we hear without a preacher, and how can he preach unless he be sent? And he that God sends will speak God's word. The problem a lot of times, we're just seeing a man. Forsake not. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Did he say he would put his, our sins as far as the east is from the west? 
He don't want it. He don't want it to be remembered. We sing the song. He puts it in the sea of forgetfulness. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. In other words, it didn't take away any sin. It was just a remission, a temporary fix. But when Jesus Christ came, John said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. 